Welcome to part two of my culinary conversation with three chefs from the Vaucluse area of Provence. Let's pick up where we left off. After speaking with John Shiri and Hugues Marek in part one, and Hugues Marek will return later in this part, the conversation continues with Nadia Samut, chef and owner of Auberge La Fenière, just outside the village of Lomarin in the Luberon. Nadia Samut's reputation for culinary innovation and human kindness extends far beyond Provence. I'll begin by telling you about my recent visit with Nadia at her peaceable countryside inn and restaurant. Nadia is sitting the the uh, outside dining area of the gastronomic restaurant is right behind it, and this is the uh, hotel. And I had uh, the pleasure of staying. I suppose this was my room, or that was my room, but with a beautiful view um, over the the property, which is uh, seven hectares, which is about uh, sixteen acres. Um, the property. Uh, this is a view looking out from from this table here. Uh, I guess this is breakfast, uh, looking out. And in that previous picture, Nadia was uh, sitting here. Uh, this was the view from my room of this beautiful uh, landscape of the uh, Luberon. And uh, you don't see it, but uh, Nadia has a, uh, there's a garden over to the uh, right. Um, I mean, a vegetable garden over to the right. And we'll talk about this. So just keep this picture in mind because um, though she's wearing a mask, you can recognize Anadia. And Nadia is very present during the meal. Um, this is a corner of the terrace where she's finishing the preparations. So she is uh, very uh, present, very accessible throughout um, the uh, exquisite meal. We'll eventually get to that, but uh, Nadia, I'm so glad uh, to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, Nadia, when you um, uh, so I was biking, I should tell everyone, I was biking a few weeks ago in the Lubier home, and just a few miles, it was day one, and just a few miles uh, before arriving at La Finière, in Nadia's uh, hotel and restaurant, just a few miles before uh, I had a fall on my bike. And I was pretty banged up and uh, bleeding and uh, a bit. And uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, I ended up uh, breaking, my, breaking my wrist. And I guess I, I arrived in a bit of a shock, a trauma, trauma state. And I uh, arrived at the reception and the receptionist immediately, you know, said, okay, well, we got to give you some, you know, I take care of you, and they gave me, uh, you know, band aids and, and and things. And then Nadia appeared, and I said, um, "We have an appointment for me to interview you." And you know, she said, "Take your time, take your time." And within an hour, even though I ended up having bruised ribs, ribs, really bad black and blue uh, marks, um, a broken wrist, within an hour, I had actually forgotten it all. I was <laughs> seated in Nadia's. A gastronomic restaurant on the terrace. And again, as with uh, Hughes, there was no, uh, it was a set a menu, in this case, 12, um, I believe it was 12 uh, small uh, courses uh, with wine uh, accompanying it. And I thought, this is so great. I have, um, I mean, it was just, I really honestly forgot that I had just fallen. Or maybe I just remembered it and I was just glad to be alive and in this uh, beautiful uh, setting. And uh, Nani, I don't know, I, tell me if it's true, but I think that is, isn't it, that your goal? Isn't that your goal to uh, someone who's yeah. fallen, someone who's fallen to help them, uh, to pick them up and... <laughs> it is. I try to make the people recover and restore mm -hmm. themselves in being in my place and understanding better how to be yourself and how to just reconnect yourself to um, the ground, the soil, the people, and only your, your only uh, best happiness and feeling that you can have. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's clear. It's clear. I mean, it, uh, you'll have to bear with us and the audience as a, I mean, it might sound a little um, <laughs> ideological, but it is a Nadia is a very holistic approach to uh, to food to um, to to being in uh, in general. But before getting to how you are now, let's talk a bit about your background because you are of the three chefs. You are certainly the most rooted in Provence. 
uh, since your family has been in that very place for generations. And not just that your family has been there, but your grandmother opened a restaurant in the village of Le Marin. Yeah. Your mother uh, took over and expanded that and became one of the first uh, female chefs to receive a Michelin star. Mm -hmm. uh, you eventually uh, took over and completely transformed it. So your cuisine, well, we'll talk a bit about that, about any commonalities between yours and your mother's, but um, it's very different. And you earned your own Michelin star in 2017. 17. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I almost even don't want to say it, but it actually, but I, I will say it anyway, but it's the first Michelin star given to a uh, gluten-free uh, cuisine. Yeah. I say that I'm almost uh, hesitant to say it because if I had not known that it was gluten-free, I never would have even thought about it. I mean, there was a, 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 a delicious uh, chestnut um, bread. I mean, I wouldn't, I hadn't even thought about it, but of course I'm very aware of it and your public is, uh, your, your clientele is very aware of it. But how did that, so you grew up, uh, presumably, I, what, 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 what kind of cuisine was your mother making? Was it very traditional uh, Provencal? I mean, gastronomic? Uh, my mother was doing like a very traditional and uh, Provencal cuisine, like Mediterranean cuisine also, because uh, my family was is from Sicily and uh, from Tunisia, so the influence are from Mediterranean. So it was like very seasonal uh, products and um, like, uh, yeah, fruit and vegetables from around. But my mother was doing more classical cuisine, very refined, but classical cuisine. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came, I'm celiac, so I grew up like uh, totally uh, like uh, sick of uh, the gluten and all that with a human, immune uh, disease. So I couldn't even uh, eat that. And it's the same for lactose for me. So it was like uh, not, it was not that I wanted to change the world cuisine, but it's only that I couldn't uh, cook uh, all the things that they were cooking in my family. So I decided I have the DNA of uh, refined cuisine and pleasure of eating and cooking. So, and uh, love. So in my DNA, I had this uh, uh, very important, uh, how you say, and strong uh, values. So I kept that and I tried to find in my uh, territory and in my uh, sector, the, the best uh, products to be inspired by and to try to make, for example, uh, <laughs> chickpea bread or working on chestnuts and all the things that I had around to make the people uh, living the best uh, experience for me. So the most important thing that my family uh, transmit me uh, in the cuisine is love, really that, because I couldn't even walk, uh, work like they, they work themselves. Yeah, so how did you, um, how did you begin your own personal transformation to, to cooking? Um, so you were interested in cuisine because you grew up with that, but uh, at what point did you in, in specifically say to yourself, I have to develop a cuisine, that, a, a, a refined cuisine that I can eat? I am uh, today, for, just to explain, I am today 40 years old and when I grew up and when I, I was born, nobody knew uh, a lot about celiac disease. So at my 10 years old, the doctor said to my parents that I have to eat like everyone. So I have been eating for 20 years gluten and dairy and all that. So I was sick all the time. And my, at my 30 years old, I became very sick and I stayed two years in bed. And when I, I recovered, um, I thought that in my DNA, this way and this education about food had to bring to the world um, a new way and a new experience of tolerance, of intolerance. So I decided at my uh, 30 years old uh, to, to come in the, in the kitchen and to start um, working and trying my experiences. So in 2015, I entered in the cuisine of my mother in the kitchen and she decided to open the kitchen and to say, okay, you want to do your work, try your experiences. And when you will be ready, you will take the restaurant. So it's at my, uh, my 20, uh, 35 years old that I start cooking, but I learned first the chemistry and uh, how to be nose in perfume. <laughs> uh, oh, you were in, in perfume, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but well, chemistry helped me a lot in that. So, it's a good I, 
so did, so you worked with your mother for uh, what? Two, three, three years. years. Yeah. Uh, and then, but was it, could, could you work together? Or because you're so, your approach is so, I mean, your food is so different. Um, at what point did she say, uh, I don't know, what did she say? She said, Nadia, I can't work with you anymore. Or, or she, she would accept, she, she, accept, <laughs> she accepted and she told me to come in the kitchen to try first. And she didn't know that I could uh, even work in that because she said, okay, you saw us in, uh, in this uh, industry and maybe it's not what you want to do. And I say, yeah, it's not maybe what I want to do really, but I want to feed the, the planet. I want to give the planet the, the energy to feed themselves con in conscience. So she said, okay, uh, try and experiment your way of doing. And in 2018, she said, okay, all that you cook, I even don't know how you have that in your mind. So try yourself and go by yourself. And in 2018, she let me by myself. Well, you are very much a uh, culinary uh, explorer and, uh, you know, really, uh, I, I just, um, I'd have to look at my notes to, to see everything that I, to remember everything that, that I ate. But one thing that stood out, and I know that, you know, I, I feel free to laugh at me if I say it, because it might sound over the top, but it's like, again, I had this sort of semi-traumatic experience right before I arrived. And I can't remember what number of dish it was, second or third. There were uh, a dozen, two dozen peas yeah. with a verbena leaf. Now, a verbena leaf, I don't know if many Americans know a verbena leaf. Uh, often we use it for a uh, tea in Fran herbal yeah. tea. And uh, when I had the peas and I, then I bit into the leaf, it's like I suddenly got it. It was, I mean, I mean, I've eaten in lots of gastronomic restaurants. I am not a food critic myself, you know, a full time, but uh, I know food. But I thought this is, this is what feeling good is and recognizing not only the, it was recognizing the taste of these two elements, but it was also, um, again, I get back to this idea of uh, trauma, but of just feeling good about oneself. It's like, wow, here I, it was like this awakening. I guess that's what I would call it. It was like, this is a beautiful setting. I just ate a magnificent pea and verbena leaf and everything is everything is all right in the world. It was a, a great moment for me, but I find that from dish to dish, that's what was happening in that, uh, in that meal. I try to make yourself like having a, a very a confidential and personal experience through that. Sometimes it's memory that you had before, and sometimes it's only a reconnection to the nature. And mm. as you saw in the first place, for example, I don't try to make any uh, uh, seasoning or anything because the whole nature is giving its own season. Uh, you say seasoning? Yeah, uh, right. uh, yeah. So I try to make yourself having your own experience. That's and interesting. That, it's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I guess it, it was very, uh, it's almost, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to use the word bland. It's almost as though it's an intentionally bland beginning. It's like, we're going to start neutral here. And as a side, I should say, and I'll bring him up a, a bit here, Ernest, who is your uh, companion and uh, business partner, and who is uh, serving, and he's the sommelier uh, also, and he's just an amazing uh, person with a, a, a tremendous background, an amazing background in, in his own right. But when I arrived and he asked me if I would like to start with, you know, what I would like to start with an, an aperitif. And again, I get back to the fact that I had just fallen, but not just the fall, but I always, I like having a whiskey or something like that. And so I said, well, I'd like strong alcohol and I feel I could use it for this at, right now. And he went back uh, wherever he went. And then he came back with this bottle of infused gin and he presented it to me and he told me all about it. And then he said to me, but you shouldn't have this. And he said, because Nadia's meal is going to start on this very uh, even, almost planned note, and it's going to build. And if you have this, it's going to ruin those first few dishes for you. And so on the one hand, you could say, but no, I want my whiskey or I want my gin. But I thought, okay, this is it. I'm just, it's just going to unfold before me. And um, it might have been my state at the time. I don't know, you know, if I arrived in a different state, uh, you know, if I would feel the same way. But 
uh, it just, I just let it unfold and it did, it unfolded beautifully. Um, and, and I, I uh, how about this? I, you're working and you're working very hard during this time, but in, as in, I showed in this picture, you're in the corner and I saw there are 20, how many seats? 24? 25. 25 seats. It's mostly uh, couples that evening I was there. I, I must say I was there for opening night because yeah. it was the first one post-COVID. Uh, you know. <laughs> and it's mostly couples. I was sitting, uh, I was alone, and then there was one or two tables uh, of four. And I saw people getting up and going over to Nadia. And uh, I thought, well, do they know her? Do they, what? And I asked Ernest uh, about it. And he said, no, no, people just get, you can get up and talk to her about what she's doing. And I thought for a, a uh, for that level of gastronomy to be that available to people at the time when you're preparing it was uh, wonderful. I got up a couple of times to see what you were doing and ask a few questions and take a picture. But, um, how do you feel, do you, is that important to you to be accessible? to people? Yeah, for me, it's very important because gastronomy has like its level, but uh, I think that it has to be something very free and very open for the people to understand because I don't feed the people only with food. I feed with culture. I feed with love. I give them the opportunity to have an exchange, which is a, 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 a real journey, a real experience. And it's very important to, to explain to people how we do that, to be transparent and to give also an experience of people, of human experience. And for me, it's very important. It's like a theater. Every night uh, for us, uh, with the world people with who I work, it's kind of a, a real uh, theater scene, like stage. And we are coming with all our uh, research, things that we, can, we want to give it to you. And it's very important in wine, in flowers, in garden, in all our experiences, because all the people who are working with me has been traveling the world like I did. So we have a lot of experiences that we want to share with people. And I think it's a good way of doing it. Uh, so you had, I mean, the, the uh, you were filled that night, and as I say, this is not a period when tourists are around, so these must be, you know, local uh, people um, who were, uh, uh, that's already impressive, uh, because we know how much in Paris uh, gastronomic restaurants are struggling, because there aren't, because tourists are their clientele, and they are not, the tourists are, are not here, so that was great to, to, to see. Uh, now, when tourists come, I imagine one does, there are other places to stay, but you do have the hotel uh there how, how many rooms are there at the time i have 12 rooms 12 rooms and uh you told me you have a big project of yeah creating yeah, what i am creating creating a, a place to live and it not it not only a restaurant and a hotel so it's a place where you can meet people being inspired by people uh, um like uh, uh, i don't know uh, uh, do yoga or ayurveda and things like that just a kind of um, uh, attention paying attention on people and give it, giving them the opportunity to recover in a way and to be in conscience too <laughs> so i am here for that and i'm going to build uh, new rooms and new places also in my uh, in my property yeah and so you're new your setting also has, so the gastronomic restaurant, I know it's, I mean, you do travel a lot and the gastronomic restaurant is only open when you're there, which you are yeah. for most of the season. Uh, but otherwise there's a uh, bistro. Yeah. Uh, a, a, do you call it a bistro? What is it? It's uh, La Ferme, the, the farm? Yeah, it's called La Cour de Ferme. And yeah, it's a, it's a farm to table restaurant, more simple, but uh, anyway, it has to be precise and we are working and only with uh, local products here in my place. Really, it's an inspiration of my territory because also I am very involved into farming and agriculture around. So I work in a, in a agricultural sector to develop the work and the way of working for the farmer. Because yeah, so the, let's sorry. get, just, just to interrupt you with the idea of Provence, does, does, does uh, Provence, Provence, the cuisine of Provence, does that mean something as a term to you? Yeah, I think that there is two things. There is traditional Provencal dishes that are recipes that people can uh, uh, transmit to family to family or like a, a kind of um, um, 
like memories of cuisine. But in a second way, I think that uh, Provençal cuisine, it's inspiring. It's only inspired by the territory. So if you have eggplant, good tomatoes and things like that, you can do a Provençal cuisine because the, the, the dishes from a region is just inspired by the products of a seasonal products and a regional product. So you have no problem calling what you make Provençal in a sense. For me, it's all Provençal. It's all Provençal, <laughs> see, yeah. For example, I do, as you have eaten it, I have, I'm working on an ice cream of chickpea. That was amazing. So, I, they, so tell me the story about the, that's, in fact, I must admit that was a discovery because I did not think of chickpeas as, uh, as something from Provence, but I know <laughs> that uh, Hugues, Hugues, uh, at times they grow some, uh, I know, uh, and uh, that I had that wonderful ice cream with a, it was served at the end of the meal, so it was a, a dessert with the uh, rum. Yeah. And uh, tell me about this, uh, how did you uh, come up with this idea of the chickpea ice cream and the rum. Um, I was working first with chickpeas because chickpeas has a lot of protein. Until I can't work with dairy, I was, I was uh, thinking about what can come like uh, that smooth like uh, when you have dairy. So I was working in uh, heating up the chickpea uh, in a pan and it was coming like um, like a past a little bit like, and I could do like any cream, like creme anglaise and things like that. And I was like, okay, I can do ice cream with that. So I work with it. And as you saw the flavor is, is kind of hazelnut flavor, uh, very uh, round and uh, good like that. And one time I was just uh, um, uh, smelling the rum because I don't drink alcohol. And I was smelling this rum and I was like, but I have to do something with this chickpea because it's 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 a perfect combination. It's something very like long, coming like a, a heaven a little bit. And I tried that, and it was a perfect combination. So I was like, okay, it's fine, and I want to give that experience to people. Well, and it was uh, it was a great uh, note, uh, you know, towards the end of the meal. At the, was it the last course? I can't even remember. At, yeah, at yeah, it the, was the last the meal. And it also uh, gave me my uh, strong alcohol that uh, Ernest didn't allow <laughs> me uh, to have early on. Uh, just a, a, a few words about um, Ernest, because he has a, um, because anyone who eats there is sure to, to meet him. Uh, yeah right, in the gastronomic restaurant. He's, he's more the face of the meal. I mean, you're the face of the meal, but he's the one who's uh, constantly present. Of course, yeah. Uh, he was a, uh, what, a refugee from, as a child, from um, Vietnam. Is that yeah. uh, correct? And uh, he's had an amazing uh, career in himself in that he was a, um, he got interested in fish and then he became a sushi master and was once named uh, best sushi chef in France. Yeah. From there, he went from fish to uh, vegetables and uh, that became his passion. And then you became his passion along <laughs> with uh, everything else and wine. He says he learned wine from your father. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a great uh, combination, the two of you. I find I mean, yeah, how, uh, how do you, does he does he give you uh he, he actually worked as a chef I mean he was a sushi chef uh, was there any uh interest of him to work in the kitchen with you yeah he, he, we worked first together in the kitchen but one day he say I can't have the same experience as you there is something that I don't I I don't want to bother he said and I say I don't you don't but uh he said, I think that you have to, to have your free experience by yourself. And I want to, to give that to the people as an experience too. So we found out our best combination to work uh, like that. Um, he's, of course, uh, trying all my plates and tasting it and giving him his uh, feedback. But uh, most of the time, I think that he gives to the experience uh, something uh, stronger like uh, bringing also his uh, soul to people, uh, which would come uh, totally with the plate. So it's a combination of, uh, of uh, soul, of our uh, two uh, both uh, soul.
I think. Well, that's, uh, I mean, it's clear, it was clear to me uh, that evening. I mean, there are some wonderful gastronomic restaurants and I, maybe my reference is wrong because my reference is more Paris, which is very different from being out in the country. But uh, there are restaurants where you go where sometimes, I mean, the, the, the setting is beautiful and you find yourself um, the set in this beautiful setting, but you're very focused on the dish, sometimes too focused on the dish. Uh, as though you're, as though each client is a uh, a Michelin, you know, is, is a Michelin judge, and really focused on the dish. And in this case, as much as I said about the peas and the uh, verbena, or about the um, chickpea ice cream and the rum, as much as that focuses your attention, but it is the, the whole is there. I mean, you have Ernest de describing something. You have you in the side. Uh, one can go up and talk to um, the entire time. There isn't that much commentary between the tables are set apart and it is a gastronomic restaurant, but people do occasionally comment because we're eating more or less the same. We are eating the same thing. Uh, and um, it's just the, the whole atmosphere uh, goes together. I mean, I must applaud you because you're very successful in the way you describe you want it to be and the way as a client I felt it um, is uh, really goes together. I mean, I must say in a very different register, same thing with Hugh's uh, restaurant. When he described what his meal, what his approach was. And when I tasted it and felt the atmosphere of this uh, like country in, it was, it's nice. Sometimes, you know, a chef describes things and then the uh, client doesn't yeah. feel the same thing about it. But I really did feel it with, um, with, uh, with both of you. Um, just a moment, because I didn't put it in front of me. I just want to go get it. Uh, <laughs> Here, I wanted to present this uh, Nadia's uh, book. And a lot of times chef's books are really just uh, pictures, but this is really detailed, detailed. Like if you wonder, want to understand um, Nadia's uh, approach or philosophy, first of all, you'll read the article upcoming on France Revisited when I, when I finish it. But also this book, uh, well, it's in French, but uh, really uh, wonderful. It's going to be translated into English next, the next uh, year because it oh. just came in Octo last October during the COVID. So it was a bit like uh, difficult, but now it's going to be translated for. And I tried a couple of boxes of your piece. You have a, a mill there where you mill your uh, different, whether, whether it's chickpeas or uh, in this case, it's rice or uh, what else would you do? The uh, chestnut, you know, to make to make bread and things. And these uh, breadsticks were uh, delicious, I must say. They um, and I was in my one of my favorite cheese, cheese shops in my neighborhood, and they actually had it, and I was very surprised to see uh, that they have it. So that's a, a bit of a plug. Uh, let's see, Nadia. I think you just froze for me. Um, do others see Nadia? I think you just froze, so I can't hear you again. Oops, there, you've just disappeared. Uh, Hugh, are you still here? Uh, there. Here, if you cannot. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, because Nadia disappeared uh, for a moment. Yeah. Um, Hugh, I wanted to know, I asked uh, John the, the same question, but uh, what are you making for dinner tonight? Uh, tonight, so you see, it's going to be again a local project. It's going to be a, a goat cheese nougat. So it's goat cheese come from the town of Pernay-Fontaine, from a small producer. So it's goat cheese nougat with almonds and walnuts and uh, apricots, uh, dry apricots. And it's served with a carpaccio of fresh tomatoes from my neighbor as well. And uh, it will be served as well with a homemade uh, red pepper and spice sorbet. And for the main course, it will be a well, lamb. That, that was just the appetizer. Yeah, that, yeah. That sounded like the whole meal. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, for the main course, it, was, it will be lamb, uh, lamb confit. So it's, it's cooked sous vide with some fresh herbs, the Provence, uh, some uh, rose garlic. Uh, it will be co slowly cooked during uh, 18 hours and served with confit aubergine and some uh, uh, some uh, petit epautre 
um, and uh, so it's a, it's a cereal from uh, Le Mont Ventoux. And for the dessert, it will be the melons uh, because we are right now in the, the season of the melon. And it will be served with uh, uh, homemade sorbet with, made with uh, the verbena from the garden. Ah, oh, uh, so we're just talking and, about verbena. Yeah. yeah, verbena from the garden and uh, hazelnuts. Wonderful. That's great. And what, I mean, we mentioned a bit before, but so with, with each uh, course or maybe with the first two courses, uh, then there's a wine from your wife's uh, estate. Exactly. Wine. Yeah. We, we serve the wine by the glass. So you can choose what you want. If you want a glass of, start with a glass of uh, rosé or white wine and after go on the red, you can have what you want and the mm. color you want. Mm. Uh, but, but if you prefer to have a different wine, we also always have uh, a card, a small card of uh, uh, friends, uh, producer of wine with Chateauneuf du Pape and Gigondas and stuff like that. I must say that there are times when I uh, personally, I want to, I go out and I want to be able to choose, uh, you know, I want a, a, a you know, a choice between five things because I'm not, uh, you know, I just want to choose. Uh, maybe that's my American side because Americans like to choose. But then there's another time when I meet a chef, when I trust a chef. Uh, I think that we're all like that. Uh, you know, if we really trust a person, we just say, you know, bring me whatever you're making. I'm, uh, and, and actually as well, when you come here, we, we opened since uh, 13 years. We never did any uh, audio publicity. Uh, advertisement, 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 yeah. Advertisement. Uh, just people talking about the restaurant. So when they come here, there is no big sign in front of the door. There is no big sign on the road. So they just say a small sign with auberge. And so when people, they come here, they know what's they going, I mean, they know the story of the restaurant. They, and right. they, they come here and they will, tr they have to trust me. So that's how we, we work and you work very well like that so far. Well, I mean, I think uh, we all, uh, as travelers, as, uh, as tourists, we all love feeling that we've come into a local place mm. even you know Thank we're you. not but we like to uh mm. we like, we like we got to, and we uh you know as much as a tourist can feel comfortable in a place i think uh, you would said it either um during this talk or when we spoke before you know when you see a sign that says uh provencal cuisine or french food you know it's a sign that's a, it's a tourist uh, restaurant yeah. And the food can be uh, can be good, but um, but to feel that you're in a, having a local experience, even if you know there might be other tourists around, it's just a wonderful. Um, I mean, it's part of not just Provence, but if if the idea is local cuisine, you want to have it with local people. I yeah, think exactly, that's, you're that's, right. That's right. part of the experience, and, and you feel more comfortable. Right, right. So it is that question of trust. Uh, Nadia, uh, I know you got cut off, uh, but now you're back. Uh, you can hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to ask you, I was asking you my uh, final question, but the uh, question, I'll ask you the same thing. It's more difficult for you, but uh, what are you making uh, for, uh, I guess, tomorrow? Your, the gastronomic restaurant is closed today. What uh, Can you tell me a couple of, um, a couple of the surprises for tomorrow? I won't give it away to... Yeah, I'm working now on eggplants because they came now. So right. I work yes. on. Uh... was just uh, was just uh, telling me, but I, I should say as a, uh, uh, tells me that he does not even like to uh, like if people call, like he does not give a menu online. And if people call no. and say, you know, what are, what are you serving tonight? He'll say, oh, we're not, we haven't decided yet. Like he doesn't even want it. <laughs> no. How about you? Do you? Do you feel that? Do you feel that way? Do you feel? Um, no, I want to make pleasure to people and um, to make happy the people. So sometimes I ask better what the people can't eat and I start yeah. working in the pairing of what I do. And uh, because I do, I work on 25 seats uh, and 12 and 12 and uh, 12 at uh, uh, 7 o'clock and 12 at 9 o'clock. I have uh, time to be very precise on what people like and don't like or can eat or not. And then I work on, on my, uh, yeah, on my best way of doing the things and being connected to people who wants to have this experience with me. But so you, as you I say, yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say you, you've mentioned you've mentioned the word precise and precision several times, and that is very, in my experience with your cuisine, that is the real word. That is to me one of the most important words to describe your your cuisine. As much as I would use the word polished for um, for Hugues cuisine, I think yours is it's just the precision. And I get back to that simple example of the verbena leaf. I don't know. Everyone should look up verbena because it's just a little leaf, but it's the precision of it. That's what really the uh experience uh but what give me another dish uh what what other dish uh yeah, nadia no, you, here, uh, i work on um you say sepia sesh like uh okay, kind of octopus with a putarg. you know putarg it's from martigue or for south mediterranean which is the eggs the dried eggs of uh, fish of mullet and I work with that with the fermentation of uh, mushrooms that I do and it's coming like very uh, something very round and very long and I really like working on it and I prepare it in front of people so people comes like uh, what is happening in the in this place and it's a really nice um, way of sharing things because People don't imagine that we can, uh, for example, make a tagliatelle or something like that with the squid. So I work on it and I try to make a new experience in the mind of people with um, very uh, traditional dishes. Mm. To accompany the recording of this uh, conversation on France Revisited, I'll be posting a list of other chefs that I appreciate in the region and eventually information about biking in Vaucluse because accident or no accident, it's beautiful biking territory, whether for a day or a few days or a week, uh, perhaps with a night or, um, or more at Hugues Inn or Nadia's hotel, in addition to a wonderful meal there. Uh, thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Hugues. Thank you, John, for your personal stories and your insights. Bye. If you're viewing this in replay, be sure to visit francerevisited.com to sign up for the France Revisited newsletter to receive invitations to my conversations with experts live and other events, as well as to keep abreast of the, the latest articles and videos on the site. Happy travels always.